My beloved family in Christ, I want to thank you for spending the time with us today or tonight, wherever you are in the world. And I pray that this message and this week's messages will truly bless you as it's a very heavy topic that the Lord has laid upon my heart to share with his children as I was praying upon what was on his heart and what was the word that was needed to be heard in this hour we're at. I just want to ask before we start that you would pray with me and then um, we can get into the word that the Lord has for us all. And I pray that it will bless you and it will bring all glory to our Heavenly Father. Our Father, Lord, I just want to come to you tonight and we want to bow down before your throne of mercy and grace, Father. As we entered through your gate, Yeshua Mashiach, with thanksgiving in our heart, and we enter into your courts with praise. Father, I want to thank you for this day. I want to thank you for one more day where we could have opened our eyes, we could live, we could breathe. Father, we had food to eat, we had shelter, we had family to care for. We have friends and godly family members all over the world. Father, where we have our health, where we are guarded and protected by your hand. Father, I just want to say thank you so much for all of your blessings. Thank you for every day and just for the opportunity to live, to, that we can see, can hear, and can share your word wherever we go because the hour is late father father i pray as we bow before your throne that you through your holy spirit and the word that you've given us will search our hearts daily lord search our hearts for anything that is hidden in darkness that is not from you that holy spirit will reveal it to us so that we can repent we can be made whole and restored, Lord, because you are calling for a bride that is spotless without stain, spot, or wrinkle. Help us, Holy Spirit, as we walk upon this path, seeking his paths of righteousness, and teach us all things about our King, Yeshua. Father, we glorify you and we thank you for sending your Son to die for our sins upon that cross. And thank you, Father, for opening our eyes and that we have the honor and the privilege to speak your word. And I ask that you will remove me out of the way, Lord, and that you will speak through your Holy Spirit through me, that I will just be your vessel. Thank you, Father, for this, this honor and this privilege to speak your word and to share your word. We love you, Lord. I pray that you would be with all of the saints all over the world right now, wherever they are. Father, that you will bless them, that you will meet all of their needs, above and beyond even that which they ask or need, Lord. Bless each and every one of them and their families. Protect them, Father, and keep them safe. Thank you, my Father. We ask this in your almighty name, Lord Jesus of Nazareth. Our Yeshua Mashiach. Amen. So family, um, the message that I wanted to share with you, uh, the topic this week is the topic of idolatry. Um, this morning as I was praying and I was asking and seeking the Lord what was on his heart, he had me open at Ezekiel 14 and the heading of that was Idol idolatry will be punished. This is a very important subject. Um, I had to speak about that God has been laying on my heart. And I pray that these words and the teaching can open even just one person's heart and eyes to change. People are sadly blinded and they don't realize that, that this is what it really is. 
Yahweh, our God, loves us so much, and all He asks of us is our undivided love and attention and committed to Him. What is the meaning of an idol? An idol is a person or a thing that is greatly admired, loved and revered. Anything you worship or give more time to above more than God. The Lord says in his word, Thou shalt have no idols above me. People idolize themselves, things, gold and silver, belongings, their own feelings, their own emotions, their own importance. People idolize husbands, wives, partners, children, friends, business associates, or even bosses, leaders, saints over the centuries, public figures. People idolize sport, TV, TV characters, actors, singers, the sports you do, mobile phones, internet, computers. Self-interest can become idols when it takes too much time away that you cannot spend with God. Yes, anything that you place above God. Even food, drinking, smoking and other addictions can become idols when it consumes you. Your own flesh and desires can become idols. Pleasing the self, the need for love, for emotions and feelings to be met, your body's earthly needs and desires, these can become idols when they rule over you. Work can become an idol. Success, achievement can become idols. Money is the biggest idol of all. Greed, pride, full of self, these are all idols, worshipping self, being king of your own life. The first commandment in the Bible says, love your God, your Father, with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, and seek his kingdom first and all of his righteousness first then he will give you all of these things that you need like provision health love peace happiness and blessings living righteous above all other pursuits of the flesh and of the mind in 1 corinthians 10 verse 14 it says Flee from idolatry. In Colossians 3 verse 5 it says, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to the earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. John 2 verse 8 says, Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God, and God hates idolatry. God is a God of love, but there are a few things He hates, and idolatry is one of them. Rejection seeks acceptance. It thrives on validation. Because the identity in the world has been stripped by negative works and actions to themselves, people who do not know their identity in Christ will fall prey to this and then develop pride. A rejected soul 
will even take on another's identity that others are drawn to in order to get the recognition and the acceptance. And this is idolatry. Guard your heart. Do not put another person on a pedestal or idolize them. God is breaking down the idols we make out of people. It is one thing to receive appreciation and compliments and then another if they make you more important than God. God's glory comes first. God comes first. But we must learn to compliment in humility and not in false humility. The Holy Spirit will search our hearts and tell us if it goes to our heads or if we raise any human more important than God. And this means spending so much time on these people, whether in the physical or in your mind, in your thoughts and emotions, that you barely get the time to read your Bible, really talk to Him and have a real relationship with God every day. Loosen your grasp on people and places that you have held on to so, so dearly. Let go of the things of the past. Do not mourn the changes coming. Do not look back. You cannot hold both idols and God's truth in your hands. Do not be like Lot's wife who looked back and didn't fully want to submit and surrender to God and look forward, clinging to her belongings, clinging to her earthly dreams, hopes and desires. And when she looked back, she was destroyed. Exodus 20 verse 3 to 6 says, Thou shall have no other gods before me. Thou shall not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shall not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, is a jealous God. Idols are not only statutes and things. Idols are in customs, money, belongings, actors, sport, technology, pleasure, hobbies, family and people. Anything you put above God. Jeremiah 10 verse 3 to 5 For the customs of the people are in vain. For the one cutteth a tree out of the forest, and with silver and gold they deck it with. They fasten it with nails and hammers that it moves not. They, they are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. Deuteronomy 6 verse 14 says, You shall not go after other gods, all of the gods of people that are about you. If thy brother, thy son, daughter, wife, friend, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, in brackets, people, sports, TV, worldly things, pleasures, etc. Thou shalt not consent unto them, or hearken unto them, neither I pity them, neither shall thou spare, neither conceal him, but thou shalt surely kill him, and thou shalt stone him with stones. Family, this is how serious idolatry is to the Lord. It is so serious to him. Other forms of idolatry that you might not even be aware of, I will mention to you. Number one, 
fetish, fetishism. It's the worshipping of trees, rivers, hills and stones. Number two, nature worship of the sun, the moon, the stars, the forces of nature. Number three, hero worshipping is worshipping of deceased ancestors, of heroes like people like sports, sports stars, actors, singers, family members, wives, husbands, partners and children. And then in Galatians 5 verse 19 to 21 it reads, Now the worst of the flesh, the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I have warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Samuel 15, 23 says, For rebellion is as the sin of divination, and presumption is as iniquity and idolatry, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you. Family, I pray that we will always and every day ask the Lord to search our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, our emotions, our words, our souls, our actions for anything, that there are no hidden idols in our lives that we might not be aware of, to search our minds on, on the things that we set our mind to and when we find our minds may be set on the wrong things that we will remember to pull down the thoughts and surrender them to the Lord, taking captive all thoughts that are not from the Lord and give it to the Lord and that we remember that we are to set our minds on things above, on things on whatever is good, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report, on God's things, on the things of His Word. And yes, we are called to be mothers and fathers taking care of our children and our families. We are called to care and love for others. Um, we are to do the works that the Lord require of us, but we are to put him first. First as the king of our heart, as the king of our emotions, of our mind, our thoughts, our actions, our living, doing everything. Love the Lord our God with all of who we are, all of our strength, all of our minds. And love others as we love ourselves. Father, I pray that you will search all of our hearts, that there will be no idolatry found, Lord. And when there is family, repent. Repent and, and surrender it to the Lord, lay it at his feet. He is a loving Father. And he corrects those, he chastises those that he loves. He loves us. And he wants to lead us along his paths of righteousness. I pray this message will bless you. And um, until next time, dear family, be blessed. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.